Okay, here is the three equation system that we're going to be using, and we will follow along on the TI-83. So we're solving a system of equation using the Gauss-Jordan method with the TI-83. All right, here we go. Okay, so I'm going to go to the matrix menu. Make sure it's clear. Okay. Now somebody time, time it because we're uh, in about nine minutes. Tell me, I'll start a new one. I'm not going to create big, big videos here because they're a pain in the butt. All right. So we've got a three by five. So I go to the matrix over to edit. I'm going to use A. I'm going to hit uh, enter. It is a three, enter, four, enter, dimension, and you can see the coefficients. One, negative three, three, negative four, two, three, negative one, fifteen, four, negative three, negative one, and nineteen. So I have all that information put in to my matrix. Now what I'm going to do is to hit the second mode button to sort of clear that out. Then I'm going to access my matrix kind of uh, window here. It's on names A and hit enter, enter, and you can see our our matrix that we have, the augmented matrix, which matches up with <laughs> this one right here. So these match. Fix that back. My problem wasn't with the storing or okay. That's why I couldn't get it. All right. So let's roll on this one. Uh, we probably, the strategy is to turn this two into a zero. So what we're going to do is use row one. We're going to multiply row one by what? Negative two, and we'll add it to row two. So I'm going to hit the second matrix button, go over to math and down to the F feature, hit enter, so negative 2, matrix A, I'm going to multiply row 1 by that and add it to row 2. Get that, scoot that over just slightly so we can see it a little bit better. Okay, and I hit enter and magically that item in the second row, first column is zero, so we're going to store it, hit the store button, matrix A, and it's all saved, so we're good to go. Questions so far, anybody? Now let's turn the four into a zero, so look at the one and the four in that column. We're going to multiply row 1 by negative 4 and add it to row 3. So here we go. Matrix math, the F feature, negative 4, matrix A. We're multiplying row 1 by that, adding it to row 3. Hit enter, boom, that's 0. Save it, store it in matrix A. Okay, we're getting our zeros. Our strategy is to work down underneath the diagonal and get our zeros. Now I think we should get rid of that 9 right here in row 3, second column. So to do that, we can multiply row 2 by negative 1 and add it to row 3. So I already saved mine, so I'm going to hit the matrix math feature negative 1, matrix A, I'm multiplying row 2 by negative 1 and adding it to row 3, that one will soon be a 0. Boom, that's 0. I'm going to save it, store it, and it is saved.
All right, so we've cleared everything below the diagonal here. Now at this point, you can start either working on some of the, you know, zeroing out things up above the diagonal, or I'm tempted to go ahead and fix that third row by multiplying by negative one sixth. That'll turn this into a one, and then this will become a negative two. So why don't we do that? All right, so I'm going, to, I've already saved it, matrix, math. This time I'm just going to use the E part of this where we're just multiplying a row by some number. It's our way of sort of dividing. We're going to multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply by negative one-sixth matrix A row three. And that will handle that row pretty nicely and make it maybe easier to zero out other things too. So here we go. Boom. So we can already see that our solution for Z is negative 2. Because I'd have 0x plus 0y plus 1z equals negative 2. So I already know what Z is going to be. So I'm going to store that. Save it. All right, now strategy-wise, uh, I don't know, we could probably zero this out and zero this out if we wanted to, and then work our way toward this one. So, if I want to, let's, let's zero out this three up here that is in the first row, third column. I'm going to use this row here, row three, to do it. I'll multiply row 3 by negative 3 and add it to row 1. So, matrix math, negative 3, matrix A. I'm multiplying row 3 by that and adding it to row 1 to zero that out. Boom, that's zeroed out. Save it. Okay. Now we only have two more zeros to get here, then we'll kind of fix our diagonal up and we're in good shape. Uh, let's turn this seven, negative 7 into a 0. I'll use row 3 again because it's got all these nice zeros and it won't interfere with other things. So let's go ahead and go to the matrix math F feature. And I'll multiply row 3 by 7 this time, since they have different signs. When I add, it will cancel. Matrix A, I'm multiplying row 3 by 7 and adding it to row 2. That one has been zeroed out. Let's save it. Okay. Now it's looking pretty good except for that one uh, negative three that we have to get rid of. Uh, I'm going to multiply row two by one ninth just to get it all fixed up. So that's I think what I'll do right now. So I'm going to the matrix math choosing the E feature and I will multiply by one ninth matrix A doing that to row 2. And what we can see now is that if we look at that second row, I've got 0x plus 1y plus 0z equals 1, so y must be equal to 1, and we're almost there. Store it, save it. Okay, last thing to do is to get rid of this negative 3 here. And I don't want to change any of these zeros, so I'm not going to use row 3, but I'll use row 2. It's perfect <laughs> for this. So I will hit the, whoops, clear that. The math matrix F feature, I'm going to multiply row 2 by what? 3. 3, because they have the different signs, you're right. Row 2 and add it to row 1. There we go. Boom. And I'm going to save it. You're at nine minutes. And now you can see that your solution is there. One's down the diagonal, zero's everywhere else. X is five, Y is one, and uh, Z is negative two. We're done. I want to throw. That one was nice. I, I Problem is done.